Hey what's up everybody, it is Kellen here from Start Your Systems and welcome back to Monster Energy Supercross, the official video game 6, where today we're going to do a little bit of early access gameplay on Seattle in the rain. Figured this would be a fun little interesting one to kind of dissect how the visuals of this game look as we are into the sixth iteration of uh, the game, playing as Justin Bogle here on the Seattle track. Um, as this is an early access, uh, I, of course I have to let you know that this is not the, the full end-all uh, game just yet. I think there are still going to be some changes and you can already tell at least from the uh, gameplay here with the rain falling down that this probably needs to be a little bit more buttoned up in terms of the actual physics of the bike because I feel like I'm still hitting all kind of the same lines but I wanted to see how much the track broke down in the rain. Um, but yeah, so I, I did a gameplay kind of similar to this. I think when Supercross 3 maybe it was came out or maybe it was Supercross 2 uh, where I just did basically a 10 minute race in the rain in the mud and saw like how much the track got sloppy what it looked like at the end of the race and so on and so forth and I kind of uh, wanted to compare I guess now that we are you know double the, the games beyond that like that was Supercross 3 and now this is Supercross 6 and I wanted to see the visuals of it uh, see how it played see how it felt so far uh, honestly a little bit disappointing how easy it is to still hit all the jumps in the rain uh, that's obviously not that realistic it should be pretty hard to do that uh, the whoops and everything aren't breaking down too much uh, I'm, I'm hoping that this is because it's early access and that we're gonna see some changes but this is uh, a little bit too easy I guess to still do everything and I just chose Seattle not you know because it, it's a good track I wanted to show it off in the dry just as much as I did want to show it off in the wet but uh, Seattle tends to rain sometimes it didn't rain this past year in Seattle for the 2022 race which is the track that I'm playing but um, just felt like it, it fit the, the bill a little bit well because sometimes we do have some muddy races in Seattle. So anyway, visually, you know, these games always look really good. Obviously, like, there's some weird glitching going on with the gear and stuff that still needs to be sorted out, but, um, you know, it's it's a great-looking game. I think that maybe in terms of the glistening of the water and the mud and the ground and stuff like that, that was maybe a little bit better in some past games, but I, I don't think that it looks bad here. I think it looks, um, you know, pretty decent. I think you can see some of the puddles in between these little ruts and stuff like that. Not everywhere, but in some places, obviously, the jumps are kind of glistening with the rain hitting them. Whoop, going off the inside of the track right there. Um, and then visually, you can see the rain coming down. Let me see if I do a little bit of first-person gameplay, what it looks like here. wish I could remember what it is to pull a tear off. There we go. All right, it's clicking in on the left stick, and that only pulled off some of the mud, not all of the mud. I still wish you could change the view of the camera because I feel like it's pointed too far up. There we go. All right, so yeah, that does clear all the mud away. But there's no rain really hitting the lens, or at least that I can tell. It doesn't seem like there's uh, actual spots on the lens. It looks like it's just the same, <coughs> same kind of mud plotches, which is also kind of annoying because I'm not behind anybody, so I wouldn't have mud really kicking up and hitting me. I would have maybe some rain hitting me. Uh, but it's not getting any rain on the goggles or anything like that. And I would say maybe that is just an early access gameplay type of issue, but I think with this, <clears throat> excuse me, more specifically, this is just a little bit of a rinse and repeat from Milestone because this is very similar to what they've had in the past when it comes to what the goggles do, mud plotches and maybe a few differing areas. It looks like that time the big one on the right side of the goggles wasn't there, like, so it, it goes in some areas, it doesn't go in others. Um, but no uh, actual rain bouncing off the lens or anything like that. Which is a little bit annoying just because, yeah, I mean, goggles in real life, especially when it's raining. Really, like, the worst case scenario for wearing goggles and using tear-offs is when it's, like, misting. And you have, like, a soft mist that just sticks to the goggle. And then it adds, when you get a little bit of dirt on it, it just kind of pools up. Um, that's also terrible to have roll-offs sometimes on it because then it'll get caught in the roll-offs. That's another thing that it would be nice if they added to this game, although it doesn't rain in Supercross enough, I guess, for them to care about this, but roll-off systems would be cool to see in either this game or the MXGP games if they ever come out with another one of those uh, because that's another you know big part of goggles and how goggles work, and especially in the rain, people use roll-offs instead of tear-offs. So um, it's cool that they added tear-offs. Like, I'm not necessarily complaining uh, too much about that side of it because it's a small detail to the game, but it's just another thing to add. You know, we've talked so much about Oh, could they add ruts and could they add this, you know, more key features to the actual physics of the game? But 
a roll-off system doesn't seem like it'd be terribly difficult because it'd really just do kind of the same thing of wiping the lens. You just wouldn't really see the hand go up and rip a tear off on the goggles because it'd be pulling a string on the side of the roll-off system instead. Um, so then you would see like maybe the the film kind of roll from one side to the other. I don't know if that would be too hard to animate or not. I'm not a game developer, but just something offering a little insight on. Um, so let's go back to third person action here. And this is this is the first third person camera, by the way. There's this one, and then there's this one. I kind of like this little further away third person camera personally because it feels a little bit more static behind the rider. This one feels like it moves quite a bit with the angles of uh, up and down and you know, you take off of a jump and it stays lower behind the rider and then when you're in transition, it goes like above the rider. I think that's almost designed to create a little bit more of an immersive experience for the people that are playing. But I like the more static one because you can see almost exactly where you're going to land on every jump. You can see the angle in which you're hitting each jump and it doesn't feel like you're getting too lost uh, in the fray of things by which way the camera angle is going. Um, so this one personally is my favorite. Uh, of the two first person settings, I feel that the this one is better obviously it's more immersive to have the goggle cam but this one i feel like does a better job of showing off um, where the bars are where the front tire is it doesn't feel like it moves as much i think it's pretty much the exact same anyway but because the goggle frame isn't in the way it just feels a little bit more natural and i like this one better because of that so i think both are fine but I would pick this one over the other one for sure. And then I'd pick this far cam for third person over the uh, closer cam. So, uh, but that's just my opinion. Maybe you guys have a different one. Maybe you like the goggle cam that I just showed off. Maybe you like the like closer, more immersive experience of the, the camera that is uh, moving a lot more. I think it just depends on personal preference and what you can get adjusted to for me. Uh, like I come from a MX simulator, MX bikes, more so background when it comes to my gameplay taste because I like those simulated aspect games. And the third person aspects of it are very static usually. Bikes is a little bit more free floating behind it, but sim is very static. And then uh, the first person stuff, less movement overall on both games than I think this one. I feel like the bike jostles around a lot underneath you, whereas in the other games, uh, you can definitely tell where the bike is going pretty much at all times because you can see the bars moving under you. Your head doesn't move as much, which is, in my opinion, a little bit more realistic. I feel like this one tries a little bit too hard with the movement of the front wheel and stuff like that to be like, look, the bike is moving. You're riding Supercross. It's crazy. But in real life, those guys are pretty well planted and their head isn't moving a whole lot. You can see a lot of what's going on um, just based on you know their head being pretty stationary and the bike not moving as much as it does, I feel like, in this first racing game. So couple different options there but uh, yeah I mean back to the the side of the mud gameplay a little bit disappointed in how easy it is to still hit everything uh, I guess I could have also played this in the dry to see if it was like really really grippy in the dry and then it got a little bit softer in the wet maybe that is something like I said that they're still working on and, and going to fix this game does come out on March 9th by the way 2023 so if you're interested in checking it out that is when you can for yourself purchase it um, we're going to have quite a few gameplays and other little explanatory videos and stuff like that coming out in the weeks coming up to the game release. So I uh, just wanted to get another little game play out and show you guys what the mud side of it looks like. But yeah, I guess I'm a little bit let down. I felt like going back to that Supercross 3 gameplay where I played as Dean Wilson uh, on a replica of San Diego track in the mud, uh, I felt like the ruts were way larger even though they didn't affect you like they were noticeably deeper and thicker and sloshier and all those things uh the rain and the puddles pulled up a lot more this one i just feel like right before the main event it started raining that's what it feels like to me uh, maybe the other option which i think is like supposed to be windy fog adds a little bit more to that but this just feels like it's raining and not really adding much more mud elements to the track or anything like that so little disappointing like i said in that regard but maybe it's something that they'll fix and hopefully we get a little more immersive feeling from that in terms of the different textures and surfaces in this game they have uh, some options in track editor this year to have different dirt types they have of course different dirt types anyway based on we go to anaheim and atlanta daytona seattle uh and the dirt changes as you go to each but i don't necessarily feel like i feel like a huge difference in between each of those it feels very tacky pretty much on every track surface so far to me <laughs> the only difference of course is there is sand in some areas of the game uh, and that sand can feel a little bit 
resistant, I would say is the right word. You can go through it and it feels like it holds the bike back, but that's it. Everything else is really kind of the same traction feeling, the same uh, momentum feeling, and so on and so forth. I mean, look at it, like I'm just still hitting all these jumps the same despite it raining, and I feel like that feels very similar to the other tracks. I don't feel like it's extra slippery or anything like that. So, yeah, oh well, a little disappointing, but I digress. We'll wrap up this gameplay here. We're coming to the white flag right now as we sneak down the inside of old Kenny Roxon. And I, I should, I haven't mentioned this too much in any of the other gameplays that I've done, but I should also mention, because some of you guys are going to say like, what the heck, uh, why is Roxon still on a Honda? Or uh, uh, what would be another one? Well, why is Christian Craig still in the 250 class? Etc. Etc. And that's because this game is based off of 2022. That's how it's always worked. It's always the previous year that they have all the tracks. It's the previous riders, uh, previous teams, etc. So uh, I don't necessarily get too hung up on that because that's how a lot of games work. Obviously, it'd be nicer if they release a Supercross game like at the end of Supercross, maybe, uh, and have the most updated, real, you know, riders, teams, and tracks. But it's pretty hard to do, especially for a company that isn't even based in the U.S. to get all that stuff done. So anyway, a little bit of mud gameplay here on Seattle. Riding is Justin Bogle and almost lapping the whole field. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. As always, appreciate you guys stopping by and watching another video here on Start Your Systems. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. So long for now.